Now that we've set up our app icons and our launch images, we're going to see how we can run our app on a real device rather than in the simulator. So you should definitely do this before you submit your app to the App Store because you never know quite what the differences might be between how your app behaves on a real device and on the simulator. But you also might want to do this for other reasons to test out features that you can't test at all on the simulator like the camera or Siri kit. Now the good news since iOS 9 is that you don't need a paid developer account to do this. Do this with a completely free Apple ID. So let's find out how. We start off by going to Xcode and Preferences and then click Accounts, the blue at symbol there, and then add your Apple ID. Now if you've got a device, you've almost certainly got an Apple ID, but if you don't, then just go to iCloud.com and create a new Apple ID right there. It's pretty straightforward. So once you've got your Apple ID and password, then log in here. So just enter your email address and the password. I'm going to jump through that bit. And then when you click sign in, you should see your Apple ID up there on the left. Now you likely won't have any settings here because you haven't set up a team yet, but that's not a problem. So just click view details and then we're going to create a signing identity for iOS development. So click create next to iOS development. That will then take a little while, but it should generate a provisioning profile for you which is essentially a file that gives you the right to provision your app, i.e. to install it on a device. And that again will then take a few moments, but once it's done, click done, and then go back over to the main Xcode window and plug in your device. So just use the USB cable to connect your iPhone or your iPad. And then if you wait a few moments, you should see your device appear in that list. Before we can run it on our phone though, we need to connect it to that provisioning profile. So go over to the general settings and then make sure you've got your personal team selected. It will likely be the only team that you have available anyway. And you'll notice here that this particular app ID is not available. That's probably because I've created an app with that app ID before. So if you get that message, just change the app ID to something else. So I'm going to try going for cat years. Nope. So I'll just pop some numbers on the end there to make sure that I don't get one that I've already created. And then you can attempt to run the app on your device. It'll take a little while. And then you'll likely get this message it says that your device is not trusted as a developer device yet, but don't worry. So now it's just time to go over to your device and here we go. So here's my device. You can get a little taste of my life there with my home screen and then to enable your device as a developer account, go to settings, general, scroll to profiles and device management. And you should see the developer account that you've just attempted to, to run and then just press trust and then allow that app to run. And from now on, you'll be able to run apps on your device and you'll even see them installed. And there we go. There's our hello world cat app and we can run it on the device. And of course it works great. So that's how you run apps on your own devices. And as I say, that's a crucial step for testing and making sure that the app works well on a real device. Now then we're finally at the stage that we can upload our app to the app store and we'll find out exactly how to do that in the next video.